What's up, people? How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. So before we begin, just want to say thank you to Nanlight for sponsoring today's video and providing some lights and being able to show you guys what I could do with them. So to walk you guys through what today's video is going to be, essentially I wanted to come up with an idea for solo filmmakers, run and gun shooters, and uh, one man band kind of people. And a lot of people have reached out to me and asked me like, hey, if you had some money to spend on lighting, like what would your one lighting kit look like uh, as like a solo shooter? And um, essentially this would be what I would pick. The Nanlite 4 is a 500B2, Nanlite 4 is a 300B2, and the new Nanlite Pavo Tube 30C2. So having these three lights as your main kit can really help create some amazing images, and they're also extremely versatile. So hopefully in today's video you can learn a little bit more about these lights, hopefully you can get an understanding of how these lights can also benefit you, and the different types of uses that these lights can provide you. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. So the first light that we're going to be setting up is the new Nanlite Forza 500B2. Um, it's a more improved version of the original 500, which was probably one of my favorite lights um, over the past two or three years. Um, I really, really love that light. And this is a better, more improved, sturdier version of that light. But this is also a bi-colored version of that light, meaning that it ranges from daylight to tungsten color. And it also has the ability to ship the green and magenta as well, which is really awesome, especially when you're doing interview setups in an office building where the overhead lighting might have some green shifts to it or it might have some magenta shifts. Being able to fine tune your coloring is extremely important, especially when you're key lighting a subject. You want to make sure that it matches with the lighting that is built into the space that you are shooting. So that is a really great, amazing thing that they added. And I believe it's one of the only lights on the market right now that could actually do that. Uh, so I'm really excited for that aspect of this light. But what we're going to be doing with this today is we're going to be setting it outside of the window that we're shooting. And we're going to be playing around as a background light. So I'm going to try to imitate the sun coming through the window. And with the Forza 500, even though it's not the most powerful light in the world, considering that there is the new 720 that came out, this is a great option to have, especially on a lower budget scale, where if you're shooting like today, where it's partly cloudy and you don't have any direct sunlight, you can still get some great output with this light to make it look like the sun is coming through. And now that the bicolored version is here, um, I can make it look like it's golden hour. I can make it look like it's daylight. So it gives me a lot of range of options. And yeah, let's start setting it up right now. So something that I'm really impressed by with Nanlite is that they updated this kind of ballast holder. Uh, the original one wasn't the best, and that was one of my only complaints really about the light. So they've updated it with this more sturdy version, which I have had zero issues with so far. And it is truly, um, really amazing and really sturdy and uh, the updated ballast everything about this light as you could tell is upgraded the quality is much better it's sturdy the new locking mechanism is really tight that you could see here um, so everything that Nanlite has done to upgrade these lights has truly been thought out and I believe they really took all the recommendations from a lot of the filmmakers that use their products and made this the best possible light that they could have so to maximize the output of this light, we're using the Fresnel attachment, which gives me an option to flood the light or spot it. So having the option can really help me fine tune what I'm going for, especially for a background light. And as you can see, compared to the original Forzas, these updated cables are really, really good. The connector ports are also so much more improved. Um, so everything about this light is, is just durable. Whatever condition that you're shooting in, the durability of these lights are 10 times improved. My goal for this positioning is to kind of create a background texture on the wall and be able to create some interest because the room is pretty much plain white. I want to be able to create some warm lighting. So I'm going to change the color temperature to maybe closer to 3200 or so. So it looks like a bit of a warmer glow coming in. So let's see if we could try to accomplish that. We start at 2700. And it's really cool because you can do a decimal place percentage increase, which is really, really awesome. But let's just start somewhere around 75% and see where that lands us today. So as you can see on this wall, we created this kind of like golden look texture through this design on the window here or the door. So having this as the background really created some interest instead of it just being like a plain white wall. Um, and we put it to 2700 Kelvin so it looks like golden hours coming through the window here, um, which is just a nice warmth, happy 
type of look. Um, next thing I'm going to be setting up is the new Nanlite Pavo tube, the 30C, and we're going to be using that as an edge light or a hair light on her for the interview. The reason I'm going to be doing that is because she has darker hair and being able to accommodate that will be able to just separate her from the background a little bit more. So the next thing I'm going to be setting up is the Nanlite Forza 300B2, which is also the improved version of the original 300. This is also the bicolored version and it also has the option of doing the green and magenta shift as well. So we're going to be utilizing this as the main key light today. 300 also has the updated ballast holder here. Um, so everything about these new lights are upgraded so as you can see this thing is like a brick it's solid um, everything about it is just really well built and durable let me turn this on watch your eyes looks like the hibachi guys watch your eyebrows yeah okay <laughs> nice the fire the hibachi <laughs> Okay, so what I added to the Nanlite Forza 300B2 is the parabolic softbox with the grid attachment. And the reason I'm doing this is because we want soft lighting on her face for this interview. Um, otherwise, if you didn't have this softbox, what I would recommend is using this to bounce off of the ceiling potentially. When you want soft lighting, you don't want to go direct with this hard spotlight because it would create harsh shadows and just not be as flattering. So if you don't have this type of uh, modifier, my recommendation is always bouncing light and then having that bounce light be the soft light coming onto someone's face. But since I do have this, we're using it with a grid as well, which helps control the spill so it doesn't wash so much in the background. So right now I'm just gonna be fine tuning this in the position and color temperature to match what I want. And then, yeah, we're gonna see what the interview looks like and make any adjustments coming from there. A little bit warm on her skin tones. So I'm gonna update that to about 4,200 and see where that lands us. Okay. okay, much better. Okay. It's too warm? It was before. Okay. All right, so I have the camera set to 5600 Kelvin, which is pretty much like daylight. It's a pretty neutral color uh, temperature within the camera. Outside, I have the warm lighting coming in at 2700 Kelvin, inside at 4200. I also have the hair light here at 4200 as well, kind of wrapping this. Um, but in terms of just general lighting schematic for an interview like this, you notice that within the frame, there is a window right. So I wanna make sure that I'm wrapping the key light from the window side. So another quick tip, this is potentially a personal preference, but whenever I'm using a softbox like this, there's two ways to do it. You could either be super direct on the subject like this, where it's directly hitting them. Something that I like to do though, is kind of position it a little bit frontal. So it's almost in front of her. So the light isn't so harsh on her face, even though it is a soft light, there is a little bit of harshness that does happen when you're direct. So I like to move it a little bit in front so the light is kind of just like gradually hitting her face. For me, that adds an additional level of softness. So next thing, now that I have my frame up, what I'm gonna be doing to show you guys what the lights are actually doing, I'm gonna start with the interview setup with no lights on at all. And then I'm gonna start with the background light, the Forza 500, and then I'm gonna turn on the key light and then I'm gonna turn on the hair light. So you get to see four different images with no lights, background, key light, and then edge light, all of them together to see what they're actually doing within the frame. So the next thing that we're gonna do is more B-roll. So for a lot of people that are doing these mini doc style things, it's not just the interview, you also have to shoot B-roll as well. So we're gonna shoot a quick scene in the bathroom here, and this is gonna be kind of like a mock B-roll from the interview. So essentially what I'm doing is trying to match the lighting from the interview as that golden-ish look. So what I have here again is the Forza 500, set to 2700 Kelvin again, going through the window. This time what I added though is a bit of haze, and the reason I wanna do that is to show that these, this light is powerful enough to get the beams. And I know a lot of people try to get that look where there's like light rays coming through. So when you have light outside that overpowers 
the light fixture that you have, you will not be able to get that light ray because it doesn't have as enough power to overcome the ambient light outside. So once I move the light over and just fine tune it a little bit, we're gonna shoot some B-roll. It's gonna be handheld. And this is gonna be a way for you guys to see that this could also be a good option to enhance your B-roll instead of just using natural light. As you can tell, that was a pretty simplistic way to shoot B-roll, um, but adding just that one light out here made it look so much better compared to just having nothing there. Um, so as you'll see, this is what it looked like before having the light and what it looks like having the light outside. So for the last B-roll thing, what I'm gonna do is kind of do something a little bit similar to the last one. Again, I have the Forza 500B outside, and what I'm gonna do for this one is uh, have the same shot up and show you what it looks like when we change the color temperature so you can see the difference in mood and tonality going from, say, 6500 Kelvin, which is super cool, to 2700 Kelvin, which is super warm. But these are just simplistic ways to approach B-roll to add a little bit of, I don't know, creative flair, just add a little bit of your own touch to it. Um, but having these lights without it, you would just have to live with just the naturalistic, which is its own look and can be very nice. Uh, but having this just adds a little bit of flair and a little bit of uniqueness to whatever story that you're trying to tell. So for the third B-roll shot, I've actually moved back to my apartment this time. Uh, so what we're going to do here is really focus on the Nanlite Pavo 2 30C2. So the reason I want to do this is because the last couple B-roll shots were really more focused on the Forzas. Um, so the, for this one, I really want to show off how we can benefit from the Pavo 2, especially utilizing the barn doors as well. Um, first thing I want to note is just the overall build of the new Pavo 2. So this is the updated version of the original Pavo Tube 30C. First thing you'll notice is the thicker diffusion that Nanlite built into this compared to the original. One complaint that I had with the original was when you dimmed it down to like one or two percent, you would see the pixels. This one you would not because of the thicker diffusion. It also adds a better level of softness because of the thickness of diffusion. Also with the 30C, you obviously know that the end caps are these big black caps at the end. With the original ones, they were quite large, and when you wanted to use them as like a practical light, for example, in frame, they didn't really pass as a practical because of how big those were. But with these newer ones, they are definitely a lot smaller, lower profile, so they can pass more as a practical light. The other thing to note is, similar to the original Pavo tubes, the dials at the end are the same, the menu system is pretty much the same, the uh, power switch is on the end cap though, so that is an update. Um, the other biggest update that I want to mention is the fact that these are Bluetooth capable. Similar to the Forzas, you can add these to the Nanlink app. And a really cool feature actually with these is something that I found out, is that there's a feature in the Nanlink app, kind of like a color picker, for example. You go to the CSI mode and you go to the camera button and what will pop up is a window showing your camera. And you could essentially take your camera or your phone Point it at whatever light fixture or practical that you want to use as the motivating source, take the picture, and it'll match the color temperature on your tube. That is a great way to match a light for a practical or a light whatever that you're motivating from, that you don't know the actual color the, the color accuracy, you don't know the color temperature that you're trying to match. This is a great way to get a pretty accurate representation to your proper tube. It's a really cool trick and it's something that I recently just found out about. So I dec definitely recommend giving it a shot and seeing how it works out for you. But for this scene in particular, I wanted to try something pretty simple. So I put my fiance next to the lamp here reading a book. It's a pretty simple setup. It's pretty common. A lot of people do it. But what I wanted to do is just really show off the benefit of the barn doors here as well. So this is what the scene looks like with just the lamp on. As you notice, the image is you know, fairly dark, it's a, a moody image and it creates a little bit of an edge on her, but there's no fill in the face. You can't really register her emotions. You can't really see her face, her eyes, nothing. So what I did was take the Pavo tube, put it near the lamp as the key light. Essentially putting it next to the lamp just makes it a better wrap of a key light and fills in her face a little bit. 
This is essentially what I would do if I was given a scene similar to this and I only had a pavo tube. I would not be upset by it because I would use a pavo tube any day of the week. Um, this is a great tool to have for this particular shot because it's not overpowering, it's not overbearing, it's not a big light source. Because if you think about it, the lamp, it's a small light source. You don't want to wrap it with a huge light source because it wouldn't look right, it wouldn't match because you need a light that is pretty small, low profile, that can match the intensity, match the uh, size similar to the practical that you're using, using essentially. So the Pava tube with the barn doors is a great tool and having the barn doors is great for reducing the spill in the background, it's similar to the grid that I showed you before in the Forzas. The barn doors reduce the spill, it creates more directionality, and having the barn doors essentially means that you are thinking more about the direction of your light and how you want to use it. But for fun, let's just check out what this looks like without the barn doors. And as you can notice, it still does the same thing with the barn doors, but there's just more spill in the background. So my recommendation is when you purchase Pavo tubes, I would definitely recommend getting the barn doors as well. Even if you don't use them all the time, it's a great thing to have whenever you want more directionality and more be more conscious about where your light is hitting. So to recap about the new Pavo Tube 30C2, it is definitely a major upgrade from the original Pavo Tube. And for anyone looking to upgrade from the original, I definitely recommend checking out these new ones. Or if you don't have tubes at all, I definitely recommend having these in your arsenal. They're extremely versatile. They could be used as hair light, edge light. They could be used as a practical light. They could also be used as a key light. So having these in your arsenal is definitely an essential light tech. So that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, again, just want to say thank you to Nanlite for providing these lights and sponsoring today's video. Uh, it's been really great working with Nanlite over the past couple years. They are an amazing company. So for anyone looking to purchase lights or invest in a brand, I definitely recommend checking out Nanlite. They are amazing, their customer service is great, and they're extremely reliable products. So for anyone interested in learning more about Nanlite and learning more about all these different products that I've showed you today, click the link in the description to learn more about them. So that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you have a great day, everyone. I'll see you next time. Peace out.